Hello, my name is Tim Stack and in this set of tutorials I'd like to go through the process of creating a video podcast using iMovie 09. And we're going to create this video podcast with um, an external camera hooked up, whether it's a document camera or your eyesight camera or an external um, webcam, just so we can capture video straight into iTunes. I'm sorry, not iTunes, iMovie. Okay, so a uh, little bit of setup first. You can see I've got iMovie turned on. And uh, before I get started recording, I want to make sure that my microphone is set up correctly. And then I just want to show you around iTunes. I keep saying iTunes, iMovie a little bit. All right, so first, I've connected my microphone to my computer, and I'm going to go to the computer system preferences. So click on the Apple in the upper left-hand corner, and the fourth one down is system preferences. All right, so system preferences come up, and I'm going to click on sound, and then I should be able to see sound effects, output, and input. So most important right now is the input. So I should see a list of the available microphones that are connected to this computer. Um, and you can see right now it thinks that I have four different ones, or maybe even more than four. What I'm looking for is this USB headset. That's the one that I'm using. Um, and once I've selected that, I can see the input levels uh, of this microphone. And I've got mine turned up all the way, because I don't like to have to talk too loud. Uh, I want to talk in my normal voice, and these level, the levels meter should be at least to the middle. And sometimes when I say P and T, it um, should sort of peak up here. Okay, so that's the input settings. Um, since I'm wearing this headset mic, I probably want the output to come into my headphones when I play it back and I hear things, so I can, sh I can set the output as well. Okay, so that's the system preferences for um, your computer. Now, if, that's, if you set that system preferences, they should also pick right up into iMovie. I should have the same preferences here, but I want to check really quick. So along the middle property bar, there's a microphone button down there. So if I'm going to record audio straight into iMovie, I can click that button and do a voiceover. And you can see there is the control for where iMovie wants to record. So right now it's picking up the built-in microphone. So if I open up that menu, I should see those same choices. And I'm going to go to the USB headset microphone. And when I do that, I should see a little better volume, but I also can control the input volume here again. So I'm going to turn that up. I like to turn it up all the way. Um, you might run a few tests to make sure that it's not too loud. And then I've bent my microphone so that it's out to the side of my mouth, not right in front of it. If it's right in front of it, the likelihood of me blowing on the microphone when I'm talking and saying my P's and T's, it's much more likelihood of that hitting the microphone and causing it to clip and have that popping sound that is almost impossible to get out, or I should say really difficult uh, to get out. So I can set that now. So anytime I need to record audio straight into my project, I got the voiceover ready. So I'm going to close that. I'm also going to check the camera. Because if I have an external camera hooked up and I want to record audio video straight into my project, um, I want to check that as well. So on this middle toolbar across here in iMovie, there's a camera button all the way over on the left hand side. So when I click on that, it opens up my import. And hi, there you can see me. Um, that defaults to the built-in eyesight on your computer. So uh, at the top of your, right above your screen, right up there, you should see a little green light came on in a camera. That means that one's activated. I do have another external camera hooked up. And when I draw open this up, I can see that it's an eyesight camera. Now if your document, can, your document camera may show up there. So I'm going to select eyesight. And now you can see it's set up, it's take its aim down at my desk. So if I wanted to record video um, straight in of something other than my face, um, and this is kind of what a document camera could do. So maybe I'm going to um, show how to tie this knot. So mine is doing a little auto focusing there. So each time I move, you can see it needs to refocus. And also maybe reset the exposure. Okay, so 
when I'm ready. I don't have to do that on the fly. I mean, I can change that setting. If I open it up to record, I can set that setting all right. When I'm ready, I'll click Capture, and it will start recording whatever is underneath that um, camera. But it'll continue to record the audio coming from my microphone, which is kind of nice. Okay, I'm going to close that window. Okay, so we're back into iMovie. So iMovie is the tool that we're going to use to bring all of our pieces together. Um, and in this project, this sample project, I'm going to create a little podcast episode about um, temperature and thermometers for my fourth grade math students. Um, so I've already gone out and found an image that I want to use. I've made a folder out here on my desktop for my temperature stuff and I found an image that I want to use as part of this project. Okay, So that one's ready to go um, because I want to have something visual while I do a voiceover as well as um, I'll have some video here. So if you, as part of your project and part of your planning, if you have some visuals that you want to go with it, whether it's video or still pictures, um, you can bring those it's sort of nice to have them all in one spot. So when you go to import them or you want to, you're ready to use them, they're already kind of all gathered up. Um, same thing is if I had found some video from somewhere else or I had captured some video and I had a, the video file was already finished or I already had a copy of the video itself, I'd want to sort of put it in all in one spot so it was easy for me to access. Um, if you had used GarageBand to record your narration and to edit, you may have your um, voiceover part already done from GarageBand. Again, I would have wanted to have saved a copy of it out there. And then I could use it um, as the audio narration for this project. Now, the reason why you may want to use GarageBand to, to record the narration is that it just gives you a lot more options for recording and editing audio. But uh, I can do that same kind of thing right into iMovie. I can record audio and edit it a bit. Certainly not with the same capabilities you could in GarageBand. Okay, so let me just move this out of the way. Now, when this first comes up, I get have four main windows that show up here in iMovie. And just a quick little overview of, of um, how these work. So there's one down here that's labeled Project, and I, I did a new project. This is where I'm going to bring all my media together in this area. This is where I create my stuff. Now, s some people don't like this project area down here. If I want to put it up on the, on the top section, there's a little two arrow button just kind of over to the left. I click that and these things change places. Um, and I can see my projects. My project window is on the top now. Um, now, if I've been working on multiple projects or maybe I've got two or three things going at the same time and I want to work on one for a little while, then work on another for a little while. There's a project library. So every time I do file new project, that gives me an addition to this list here in the project library. So you can see each one of these and each one of them has a um, timeline or a little set of thumbnails that let me, I can kind of scrub through it if I've forgotten um, what these things are. Okay. So each time I create one, it adds it to this list. So you can see there's a little preview of that one. Here's the one um, that our sample one that we haven't done anything to yet. So, but I can close that window um, pretty easily just by doing that. And now I am out, back, ready to go. Um, so I'd only want that window open if I was switching between different projects. All right, this event library, and I'm going to switch it back. <clears throat> I'm a little more in the habit of having it set up like that. So the event library, that's where all the video that you've brought in, regardless of what project you were using it on, that's where it ends up. It's kind of like the big filing cabinet of all the video that you have available to you. So for instance, if I twirl down where it says 2009, each t I've got two events in there. Each time I import something into iMovie, I get a new event. And I just let it let it name it by default here, and I got the uh, the date. And you can see I just got a little video. That one was captured just with my um, uh, built-in camera. Here's another event that has a lot more video in it. You can see I can kind of scrub through and see what this video is just by moving my cursor over the top here um, of all the video that is inside that was imported on that day. Um, as I look through this, you'll see more things. Um, 
and I can see the video that goes along with that event. So it's kind of like the filing cabinet where I'm going to, um, I can access all my stuff. The other um, section on this page is the monitor window or the preview, and you can see when I was scrubbing over stuff, that's where I could see the video. If I just wanted to watch that video, I just press the sp space bar and it actually plays. Sorry about that audio. I, th I think it is picking up my. Um, let me just uncheck that. Um, so I could just play this video if I wanted to to really get an idea of what that video was, or if I just move my cursor, my mouse across it, I can see the contents of that of that video there. Okay. So those are the. That's kind of the top section here. These three. These three sections. The event library. Um, once I click on an event, I can see all the raw footage that's available from that event, and then I get a little preview over on the right-hand side. Now, once I get working, I may not need to see this event library section anymore, and there's a button down on this, kind of on the left side, kind of in the middle with a star on it and a little arrow. When I click that, it closes that, so I can I get more room to see, actually see this video that I've that I've my raw yeah. footage up here that I have available. Um, so now once I'm ready to work I really only have three windows to work with um, the raw footage there in the upper left my monitor window and then the project that I'm creating this big project window where I'm actually going to be putting things together alright so with that um, in the next tutorial we will start putting our project together